All right, so we're staying with football on the continent of Europe. The UEFA Europa League semi-final stage will kick off on Thursday with two intriguing ties. Two former midfield greats will come face-to-face -face in the coaching arena as Daniel De Rossi leads Italian giants AS Roma into battle against Bundesliga champions by Leverkusen, who are guided by Chabi Alonso. Well, the first leg is set for Rome's iconic Olympic Stadium. And in the other time, the French heavyweights Marseille will take on Atalanta, who eliminated favourites Liverpool at the quarter-final stage. Well, I did say Bren Sancho will be staying with us and he joins us for yeah. this aspect of the discussion. Brent, are you there? Yes, very much there. Can't wait for this tie, of course, uh, by Leverkusen with the possibility of, of breaking the, the unbeaten record, which stands at 49. Uh, of course, they're currently at 46. So uh, maybe uh, one step closer to a historic feat from the men from Germany uh, with a huge tie against Roma tomorrow. Yeah, and Brent, we have to remind our viewers that last time at this same stage, in this same competition, uh, Bayer Leverkusen was eliminated by AS Roma. So this match is even more exciting than many expect because it's a revenge match. Yeah, it could be coined that way, but I tell you what, how much things have changed over the course of a year. Uh, the, the Roma is a completely different team to what, what they were back then. Of course, they've had the coaching changes. Uh, they've had their struggles in, in Serie A. Uh, and it's uh, been a team that really hasn't hit the high notes uh, that they were probably uh, just about doing last season. And of course, uh, what much can we say against uh, about Bayern Leverkusen and what they've been able to achieve undefeated in the Bundesliga? Uh, runaway winners with the title uh, and a team that's really in a good moment. Albion, of course, over the last couple of games, they have not looked at their best. They've wobbled a bit. Uh, they've looked a bit like uh, they've kind of taken a foot off the gas, but they've still been able to win. They've still been able to get results. They've still been able to remain undefeated. So the question is, will that, uh, I don't want to use the word luck, but will that streak continue uh, going into this fixture? Yeah, and you just made such an important point. Of course, AS Roma looking different as than they were before. And I want to bring up one of my favorite coaches, well, He's my coach, favorite coach when he does uh, media press conferences. That's what I like, how he talks, right? Uh, Jose Mourinho, how he left this AS Roma team versus Brent, the AS Roma team that we see now, the difference in that squad. Of course, I think he played a, a, a lot lower line of, 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 of course, uh, engagement. They, I, I don't want to use the word defensive. Uh, they're a bit more pragmatic in their approach. Um, but uh, this Roma team is trying to play. They're trying to find combinations. They're trying to be a bit more expansive in their approach. Um, but they're still struggling, Mariah, to find their DNA. They're still struggling to be comfortable in their own clothes. That man there in the picture, the Paulo de Bala, uh, has, been, has done well for them this season. But they've not really found their identity so far. And I think that's the challenge uh, for this year's Roma. We all know how big a personality of course, Jose Mourinho is, and he did imprint that on the Roma team. So I think they're really trying to shape off that and trying to find their new skin. Uh, the question is, can they find it? Can they play uh, two perfect legs of football and get rid of a very, very difficult Bayern Leverkusen team? Yeah, and Brent, you just referenced Bayern Leverkusen's current run of 46 games undefeated and the fact that they recently claimed the Bundesliga title as well. And I want to suggest that there is a kind of energy in this Bayer Leverkusen team at the moment that just is that they, they refuse to lose because their last two Bundesliga games ended in draws against um, Borussia Dortmund and Stuttgart. And in both, in both instances, they needed stoppage time goals to get the drawn results, to extend their unbeaten run. So they were facing defeat, snapping their, their unbeaten run twice back-to-back uh, -back weeks and found stoppage time goals to get you know, to keep their unbeaten tag going. So there is something, there's an energy in this Leverkusen team at the moment, Brent, that mentally charges them up for these assignments. Yeah, and, you know, it's, there's a good and a bad when it comes to those two results. And what we've seen since they've won the title, uh, certainly there is a will, there's, there's a mental desire, uh, and there's a push within the psyche that they want to not lose football games, that they are going to fight and give it everything so they don't lose. However, in their body of play, Lance, 
they've looked fatigued. They've looked signs of tiredness. They've looked uh, a bit uh, sh uh, dull in the, in the approach that we normally see from, from this Leverkusen team. Uh, but as I mentioned, the will has pushed them over the line. The question is, is it is it going to be probably one game too many for them meeting this Roma team? And, and of course, a Roma team that could wear you down. Uh, that could certainly be uh, a team that could obviously use uh, the, the battle of attrition to get a result. I think that is the question because if Leverkusen comes with not just the mind power that they have and the willingness to, but if they also bring the sharp, fresh football that we saw at the first half on some of the stages before they won the title uh, to a game, I think they're way odds on favorite. But because from what I've seen in the last two games, I'm seeing a sign, I'm seeing signs of fatigue. I'm just a bit concerned that they started to run out of gas. Yeah, um, I want to get a quick comment from you as well, Brent. And I think we touched on it before, but Xavi Alonso as one of the, 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 the new coaches. We've seen history is replete with coaches who have been solid as players, but in the early stages of their managerial careers when they retire, it takes some time for them to, to get the feel of the managerial role. We can name quite a few of those at the moment who are, who are struggling. But Xavi, who took over this coaching uh, um, role, I think back in 2019, um, appears to be, you know, uh, soaking up the the the, the um, assignments and 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 doing well. He's doing very well, um, and has been able to, of course, as we mentioned, uh, put this team on course of possibly be breaking records and, and and being a historical team. Uh, and what he's bringing is a freshness in terms of his tactical approach, in terms of the way he wants to play. He's been very adventurous for a first-time coach. Uh, and this is not uh, one of your secondary or tertiary leagues. This is one of the top leagues in Europe in Bundesliga. And they've toppled Bayern Munich with the way they played. Uh, and they've been able to do very, very well. However, Lance, I think his real judgment will come next season. Can he emulate? Can he still motivate players like a Pep Guardiola that can get you to win consecutively can, and, and be consistent in your performances. I think that is when you're going to really start to, to test his coaching method. But so far, so good for Xavi Alonso. Uh, and I just hope that he could carry on for what he's done this year. I think he's made the right decision in staying uh, with Bayern Leverkusen because I think he still needs time to grow as a coach. But he's certainly on the right pathway. Yeah, and Brent, the other fixture that, you know, we want to pay some attention to, Marseille at Atalanta. What do you make of that? Today, Lance and I had a off-air discussion. Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang, it's as if he fell off our radar, <laughs> but he plays for Marseille. And he plays for a very good Marseille team as well, who's been doing extremely well in this competition. But I just think coming up against this Atalanta team that we saw against Liverpool and the way they've diced Liverpool, apart uh it might be a bit uh, as i said one step too far for them for but you, you have to give credit to marseille what they've been able to do uh they're very strong in attack of course led by the, the forgotten man uh, and i'm sure he will have a point to prove they beat a very good benfica side uh, to advance in the tournament but again when you look at the body of work that atalanta presents to the table uh, I've not seen Liverpool, and, and, and I'm sure Lance could bear me out here, I've not seen a Liverpool team be torn apart the way they were uh, against uh, against uh, another opponent at Anfield and the way they did it. So this Atalanta team is coming in with a lot of confidence, and I, I just feel uh, that what they bring to the table, and the way they're playing right now as well, Mariah, they would be very, very difficult to beat. What will be the difference maker between these two teams? Because I think this is one of the matches, Brent, that's very close. And to me, it's difficult to call. Like, I can't predict. If I had to predict, luckily, I'm the one asking the questions today. If I had to predict, <laughs> to me, it'd be, I'd say, like a draw. Because it's a difficult one for me to call. I think if Atalanta is as clinical uh, as they have been, uh, certainly in the tie against Liverpool, I think it'd be lights out for Marseille. Because uh, Atalanta... One of the things I was impressed with in the, in the games they played in, in the Europa League is that they press very, very high up the park and it doesn't matter who they play, uh, they come that way. And uh, if Marseille can break that first line of press and then express themselves afterwards, I think the tie could simply, uh, of course, push towards them. But if they succumb to that, like Liverpool did at Anfield, uh, I think they will have their challenges. And again, I go back to the fact that I just think that if, if you can execute both teams this is, uh, and be very clinical, both teams I'm talking about, then I think the one that has done it better 
uh, will go on to win the tie. And right now, all arrows point to Atalanta okay. and the way they've been playing to me that way. All right, Brent. Well, Jamaican international Leon Bailey and his Aston Villa team will be taking on Olympiacos in the UEFA Conference League semi-final. That's also on a Thursday. Brent, are Aston Villa favourites in this competition? I would say they have every opportunity. It's uh, I know it's not the glory competition with all the, the, the whistles and bells that comes with uh, the others, but this is a very, very difficult uh, leg of the competition. And you, you, meet, you come up against teams that sometimes are a bit more fresher than you are. And, and I think that's the case with Aston Villa. If you've looked at their performances over the last couple of weeks, certainly in the Premiership and in this competition, again, like many teams, they are starting to see, feel the, the impact of the, the very hectic schedule that is the Premier League and that is the Europa League. Of course, they coming back. They came back from Lille uh, to get a, a win on penalties. But again, a team that looked very leg-weary throughout their performance. And when you look at the depth of squad that Villa has, or don't have, I should say, I think that will play in mind. Remember, Mariah, they're also challenging for a spot in Europe currently in the Premier League and would want to keep that. Uh, and while they fight this front in the Europa League, so it really is going to come down to whether or not they could show that fatigue factor and go to give a performance. But of course, Brett, you would concede too that um, the skill and the experience of Unai Emery, who makes the decisions strategically for Aston Villa, would count as as a plus for Aston Villa because um, he does have a lot of experience in, in Europe, Unai Emery, and he, he, he knows his job. Especially in this format of the competition. Well, in, in terms of European competition, he has quite a good track record, and uh, I, I do think he's done extremely well with uh, a limited squad, and I say that all due respect to Aston Villa. Uh, they're certainly, Lance, punching above their weight in the Premiership, uh, and now they find themselves in a situation where they can possibly go on to European glory. So I'm very sure uh, that uh, Unai Emery would be putting up and planning the, the, the right way to, to move forward. Uh, I was a bit concerned, I would say, in the Lille game, when they, they looked like they were beaten for a lot uh, of it, uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an atmosphere that was really charged and uh, they did look a bit dead and buried, but somehow they, they're able to come to life. And if they can find it in their way, we talked about the will, the want, the desire to go out and win these sorts of competitions. I think they can do it. But that's the question. Is the will going to be there? Yes, I, I, I do give the Unai Embry factor as a big factor, but I still come back to the fact that that mindset, will they have it? And of course, as you put it up against uh, fatigue, which one will win the battle? Yeah, and, and if you look at what faces uh, Aston Villa in the coming weeks, uh, Emery has a choice between a Champions League focus and, and a title here. Which, which is more important for him? Yeah, you hit the nail on the head. That's exactly what I was alluding to because uh, if I'm sitting in his um, chair, Lance, I would be looking at Champions League because obviously, first from a financial perspective and second, he'd be able to attract the kind of players I'm very sure he would want to supplement the squad that he currently has. Um, and yes, it's a difficult call. And you always hear managers say, well, we want to win every single football game. We want to do well for the badge and all that. That's not true. They, they have to understand. They do always understand the size of the squad, what they have and what they can't do. What you cannot do if you're Aston Villa is fight on both fronts because you don't have the squad size and quality to do that. So hence the reason why sometimes coaches, and I do feel when I Emery will do this, may focus more on the Premier League. It'll be interesting to see the starting 11 that he puts out tomorrow, uh, because that would give you all the indication as to which one he deems more important. Yeah, Brent, well, what's for sure is we have a lot of different football to look forward to, and we will <laughs> definitely be chatting with you again. We want to thank you so much for your time, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks, guys. Have a great one. All right. Brent Sancho there, our football analyst. We'll take a quick break and we'll be right back.